Okay, I haven't made a video for a while. I've been moving and I apologize, but uh, I'll do a quick tutorial on how to do pretty cheap and easy uh, swamp terrain. This is my prototype that I put together and uh, I'm sorry about the shaky camera. Uh, my shop is not completely set up yet so I'm on the kitchen table for the most part uh, but uh, this took me probably about a total of an hour of time work time to make uh, over the course of a few days so uh, that is the what hopefully the final products will continue to look at look like uh, alright so on to the tutorial from the beginning okay I'll keep this part pretty short but uh, basically all you're gonna need here is some eighth inch hardboard or any other kind of uh, board to be a base you're gonna need a sheet of uh, moss you can get at any kind of uh, hobby store. Uh, you're going to need PVA glue to glue down whatever kind of stuff you want to put on it. And then you're going to need some fake water and I'll talk about that when the, the time is right. But the stuff you use for flowers, uh, flower arranging works just fine. Uh, other than that, you just need some tools, you know, some chisels or a sander or whatever kind of tools you like to work with. Uh, but that is really all you need to make this project happen. All right, so here is my new work area, much smaller than my old one, uh, but it will be adequate. Uh, so the first step in making this, and I did all this at once, is I took a piece of scrap uh, hardboard from another project, from my lava board project, and I just cut them out to shape to make some bases. I made four, uh, the one you just saw, and then these. Uh, so it, it's pretty simple, and then I just, uh, I wanted to keep it flat, uh, so what I did is I just uh, sanded the edges down. Um, I didn't want to build something... Uh, you know, I could have made it up on uh, styrofoam, and if you want to do a, a pool of water, you probably should do that, you know, a deeper pool. Uh, but, you know, I wanted it to be sort of flat to the ground uh, as opposed to having to come up a hill uh, to get to the swamp. That just, I didn't think that would look uh, very normal uh, sitting on the board. Uh, but uh, if you disagree, then go ahead and make it up on foam board, make some deep pools. You could probably come up with some pretty cool effects that way. All right, so the next step is what I'm going to do is I'm, I took some chisels and I uh, chiseled out some low areas uh, so that I could at least get a little bit of moderate standing water uh, when I poured in some of the water effect uh, to make it look kind of wet and swampy. So uh, let me uh, go do that and uh, I will get back to you. Okay, so I'm done chiseling it out. You could use a sander, you could use a Dremel, you could use whatever kind of stuff you want for this. Uh, um, so basically, I just uh, hollow out a little area here and there just to give a little variation to the depth. Then what you need to be careful of is you don't do what I did to this one, which was I chiseled right through the bottom. Uh, that makes putting a water effect in kind of hard. Uh, I'll do a repair on that here in a few minutes. Uh, and then this one, I left this one blank uh, just to see uh, at the end, if there really is any difference between uh, putting the variation in or not. Uh, I did the smallest one this way, so at the end we'd be able to tell which was which. Um, so, there's a little bit of this is a, an experiment work in progress, uh, but uh, that's easy. This all took me about five, ten, ten minutes maybe. So, uh, still on a pretty quick schedule here. Okay, I'm back, and all, all I did was do a little patch. I had some leftover plastic card from another uh, another project um, so I just laid that in there that should be good enough uh, no need to really sand this down or anything all the shavings will be covered up uh, so no need wasting time on being real real neat and clean with that so the next step is I have again left over from another project some of this uh, you buy it at the hobby store it's just like moss paper uh, that you stick stick on. I think it cost me eh, five or six bucks for this sheet. Um, I used it when I made a ruined fountain, had some left over, and thought, hey, that'll make good swamp terrain. Uh, so basically, I cut this out. You can see where I cut out this piece for the last one. Um, it self adheses on, trim up the edges, and that's the end of that step. Uh, so uh, let me 
uh, get working on that and uh, I will be back in a moment. Okay, so basically just measure this out. Make sure that you do it on this side, you know, so that the right side, uh, because they're odd shaped, uh, if, you, if you measure it, if you do this and, and cut it towards the back, uh, what'll happen is it'll flip over and it won't, it won't fit right. So basically, you know, find a spot you like, then you just uh, cut it out. It's gonna be some waste. I put the paper down on here, just like with the cutting and the painting, just to save the desk. This is actually one of my kids' school desks, or you know, actual work desk that didn't fit in the new house. Uh, so get that part done. And then it's pretty simple. You just can peel the back, which actually that's probably the hardest part of this whole thing is getting this thing peeled. And I hope this is in focus since I'm not looking at it. See, this is when I need my wife and who has fingernails and can do this stuff. stuff is really sticky when you get it off. So, just, now I have to remember where I had it. Okay. I guess that wasn't right. Okay. Um, bum, bum, bum. See, never a dull moment, is there? You just get it to where you like it. You push it down and you shove it down into your depression. We'll see if that actually makes a difference at the end. Um, pull it as tight or as loose as you want. And then you just trim up the edges. And now you've got your actual base. Now this will gum up whatever scissors you decide to use. So. Probably best if you use old ones, and not nice ones like I did. Um, you can try and save these little bits as cheap as I am, and as much as I like not wasting stuff, even I'm not going to bother with that. Um, cut this away. I'm not going to show you all three of these, but uh, let's see. But you just pull it and you can kind of wrap it around the edges uh, so that it comes down the, you know, the little bevel that you created. There's somebody going down the road. We're living a little near a busy road. can do is the other little pieces there are going to be some areas that are a little more bald if that bothers you take some of your leftover stuff you cut away that's still pretty sticky and uh, you just put it in there too um, it'll, it'll stick right on top of itself and you will never notice that it is two different uh, pieces of the, the little mat of the the mat. So basically you just make some little patches with thicker stuff. Uh, and then the other bald areas, that's just where you can put in your little bits of terrain. And there you go. There, there is the first one done. Uh, I will do the other two real quick and get back to you. Okay. I uh, changed out my paper. Uh, I've said it before. Uh, if somebody near you is moving, hey, grab some of their packing paper. It makes great uh, paper and it's free. And when you're done, <coughs> you can you know wipe your dry brushes on it, whatever you do, and you throw it out and you move on to the next one. 
anyway cleaned off my scissors uh, so they are not completely ruined because of this and then I have my uh, next three pieces of swamp terrain. Uh, next step is actually to go through whatever kind of ruins or plants or whatever else you want to put on top of this. Uh, I've got some scrap uh, ruins pieces from another project. You're probably sick of hearing that phrase by now. But uh, anyway, I'm going to go through it. I'm going to pull out some pieces uh, and then uh, uh, figure out how I'm going to decorate this up similar to the one I showed at the beginning. Okay, so here is sort of my uh, general idea of what I'm going to do uh, with these. Uh, I'm going to use these little part statues to kind of tie all the pieces in together. And uh, I'm going to do some damage on these things. Uh, but uh, let me go glue up the few pieces that need to be glued up, do some damage, and then uh, the step after that is you paint them up before you glue them down. Okay, I have uh, made the walls. I just did a quick uh, three color dry brush, you know, a black primer, uh, followed by three shades of gray, and then a black wash uh, on it. Uh, you know, some battle damage, do it however you want, put whatever you want on it. Um, then I, I glued them down, and uh, you know, the glue goes to the uh, moss pretty well. Uh, you just push it down so you can get to the base uh, of it. Uh, and then I added in one little skeleton just for fun. Uh, the next step is to add in, uh, you know, sort of the moss vines. I pulled the the other one out here. Uh, it's not 100% dry yet, um, but the, the little moss covered areas. Uh, it's time to do those on this. And what I did is I just uh, took an old tub. I think it was blue cheese or something at one point in its life, uh, and I just did a mix of a couple different fine turfs. I did a moss moss green and a earth colored. I don't know what company this is. I can't remember. I just cut off the tags. And then I put in a little bit of this early fall fall just for some color. Um, I mixed those up, shook them up, and then this step is pretty easy. Um, all you do is just take a little bit of glue, and I'll just show on one or two spots, but just a little bit of glue. overdo it. You know, wherever you want it. And you know, vines and stuff usually go up the, the little cracks. Uh, I'm not doing it as much here because it's a lot of, a lot of it is just uh, more to do with um, you know, a moss overgrowth, and then I just drop it on there. Um, usually I can recover the, mo uh, the moss that comes off of it and reuse it. A little harder with this, but uh, you can just use a clean sheet when you tip it. And then for this, Forgot to clean the tip off before I started. Okay, you just a little bit of you can do whatever kind of uh, lines you want. And then just it's the same sort of thing. And then anywhere there's not glue, it'll all just shake off and a little bit of light blowing and it'll, it'll come right off. And once I do this, and it's whatever, whatever makes your boat float, whatever you think looks good. Um, don't forget the ends though, I always do that. Um, takes very little time. Just make sure you cover the, the glue. You don't want glue showing through afterwards. Um, 
and you can recapture this like I said just you turn it sideways and then on a clean sheet of paper and it'll you know it'll come off um, a little light tap and I'll get the rest of it off all right and that is how you do the vines and uh, I will uh, go on and do the others once the vines are done we'll come back add some water effects and that will finish them off all right so next step is pretty easy all you do is you dump the dump the leftover flock a little bit of dump white taps on the back gets it out of the moss but you know it's not a big deal because when you do some water effect that moss will st or the uh, flock will sit down uh, stick down in it give it a real gooey swampy kind of look so uh, not as worried if you've got a little bit of that left over so dump the rest uh, and then I just have an old shoe brush that I use to just sweep the flock up at the end uh, and then I will sweep it off the edge back into its bucket all right I will uh, dump the rest and then we will come back for the next step all right the last step in this is doing the water and I'm using quick water it's a two-part epoxy basically and you just pour in equal amounts of the two uh, part A part B um, then mix them I use little cups a lot a little goes a long way in this one I just use the two cups then I mix them together and I probably made too much already uh, this one's very thick I think mine is getting a little old it's not hardening as well as it used to uh, but it's probably this will be the last project I use with this anyway so um, basically you, you pour them together then you stir it for maybe upwards of five minutes uh, and it's just equal parts one and the other uh, so that's why I like these little cups um, if you don't mix them right it doesn't dry now like I said a little goes a long way in this, uh, it is gonna, it will sort of spread uh, and look kind of gooey, uh, which is kind of swampy looking. Uh, so it looks about even. So then you just, it actually says to pour part A into part B, but part B pours better. Uh, so. I'm not going to make you sit here and watch me stir this for five minutes, um, but basically you just stir it until it's clear and there are no bubbles. If you stir it too fast, too hard, you get a lot of bubbles, um, but it doesn't matter because the bubbles won't matter in this project and they pretty much will just uh, bubble out to the top anyway. So it gets a little discolored when you first start mixing it and uh, then it gets back clear again. Uh, so. Uh, like I said, I'll come back when I'm done mixing. So I've been stirring for about five minutes or so, three to five minutes. Um, and it's been about five minutes, but I did go out and check on the grill in the meantime. Anyway, I vigorously stirred, which they tell you not to do, but it's made for flower arrangements, in which case bubbles are not a good thing. Uh, in a swamp, bubbles aren't such a bad thing, and Anyway, it's going to all spread out and get sucked into the, the marsh, so it really doesn't matter. So then basically all I do is pick first those depressions that I, was, I had made. Um, I'm pretty sure this is one right here. And you just put a little in there. Like I said, a little goes a long way in this one because it is going to spread out um, and just become kind of wet looking. And then I kind of do it around where the anywhere I feel like doing it so around the walls you don't have to be exact because it's going to spread and get gooey all around 
Um, and then over here, I'm trying to remember, this is one. Um, okay, it's not as. Um, you know, I kind of want it on this a little bit. And I want my little skeleton here to kind of be stuck in some of the water. Down behind his head. It'll, it'll all spread out. And over here, this is the one we didn't do any kinds of depressions on. And uh, I've looked over the last day as the other one I did spread out. And I don't think it's going to make a difference. It's really more sort of a where do you want, want it to be. Um, and you can already see how it's starting to spread over here. And the bubbles are already starting to come out. Um, and I will use up this cup around different areas. And then it has to sit for a day or so. Um, it's workable for, I forget what they said, like four hours, um, but really it's, uh, it's not good and dry for at least a day, um, if not more, um, depending on how well you stir it up. Um, and I'm going to, I'm putting a little bit on my other one just to See if I can goop it up just a little more. Um, and uh, so that's it. We will come back tomorrow and see how it looks. All right, and there you have it. There's the four uh, swamp terrain pieces done. I'll come in a little bit on each one. Uh, So you can see you've got the little vines, we've got a little pool. So it does look actually like those little bit of depressions did seem to make a difference. Um, here's the one that we did no, or I did no depression. Uh, you can see where this is a little depression there that I stuck the mask in. Uh, there was no depression around him, so you can see how it just kind of sinks into the, the moss. And then there was a little bit of a depression dug into this one here. So, as you can see, a little bit of moss terrain. Uh, this is, we are at about the 24, 48 hour mark. I'm trying to remember. Yeah, so two total days worth of time. But as you can see, just about everything I did, I did on screen. Uh, so very easy to do very fast to do uh, and uh, if you have any comments please leave them below I'm happy to answer any questions you have uh, or any good ideas you may have I, I am perfectly happy to steal alright uh, until next time thanks for watching okay so I lied I'm, I'm back and I just want to show it with some uh, models for scale so here we have it with some orcs works pretty well with some tyranids uh, and you can run them through the mud, through the muck, and everything works out okay. No problems on the bottom there. All right, so like I said before, until next time, uh, thanks for watching, and please leave comments below, and I especially like good ideas.